Robert Wischeni is uh, SSM President and Age Friendly Communities Chair. He holds a B.Ed. and a postgraduate diploma from the University of Saskatchewan, a teacher, principal, and sex sessional le lecturer with the U of S. He also served as proctor and uh, writing tutor for Parkland Community College and uh, as an adjunct uh, professor for the uh, University of San Diego. An SDF counselor for 16 years, he has uh, served on ad, on ad hoc committee and advisory committees for both STF and the Ministry of Education. He is past president of the Saskatchewan and Canadian Teachers of English and Language Arts and immediate past president of STS. Robert is active in his church and community organization and is an active volunteer. Linda Anderson, uh, yes she is here. <laughs> uh, Linda is a member of the SSM board and has worked on the age-friendly communities from its beginning. Linda is a retired educator and communicator. She taught in the Regina Public Schools for 16 years. She then spent 22 years with United Church in variety positions. First as Saskatchewan Provincial Staff, then to Toronto as head of United Church Communications, and finally, Executive Director of Calling Lakes Centre in Fort Capel. In, in Fort Capel. Linda believes in the power and wisdom of older adults who can help all ages recognize the value of working together to make our communities the best they can be. And Rosemary Flamen. Rosemary uh, is the program coordinator with uh, S SSM, joined the staff just over a year ago. She coordinates the age-friendly community workshops around the province with the rest of the team. Rosemary grew up and lived in rural Saskatchewan most of her life. She worked for uh, Regina Coppell Health Region in a number of capacities over the 35 years. Lastly, at the Saudi Health Action Centre, a project initiated by community leaders approximately 19 years ago, which is still open today. There she coordinated a number of community development projects, including the PARTY program, Prevent Alcohol and Re Risk Related Trauma in Youth. Most recently, she was part of a community group which team leaders from Saudi, Regina Beach, and Buena Vista, who successfully brought primary health care to their communities. Please welcome our, our, uh, our speakers. <laughs> With that, I'm going to turn it over to you guys, and uh, uh, we look forward to your presentation. Thank you for your <clears throat> kind introductions, and uh, uh, perhaps just to start uh, a word about uh, Saskatchewan Seniors Mechanism for those who may not be familiar with it. Uh, we refer to it in a more friendly uh, manner and a shortened manner as SSM. In fact, sometimes when people say Saskatchewan C Seniors Mechanism, we're not quite sure who they're talking about because we call ourselves SSM. SSM is a nonprofit uh, volunteer provincial organization it acts as an umbrella to bring together uh, 16 Saskatchewan seniors organizations representing about 100,000 seniors throughout the province. And uh, the purpose is to contribute to a better quality of life for older adults. There are a number of ways in which SSM does this. I won't read through all of them, but um, there are a number of ways and there are a number of member organizations that belong to SSM, and uh, you can see the list there for yourself. Now, uh, SSM does this in a variety of ways. Uh, they advocate uh, by doing research and action on issues affecting seniors, by being a unified voice in advocating for seniors, uh, giving direction and support to member organizations, creating awareness and, and uh, coordinating resources and service for seniors, as well as partnering with membership with member organizations and others such as SUMA. We recently signed a partnership agreement with, with SUMA. And um, today is an opportunity for us to showcase uh, an aspect of the Saskatchewan Seniors Mechanism, or SSM, 
and that is the age-friendly program that we have. So while you're scanning um, some of our supporter organizations as well, uh, we're going to get ready for a little skit that we have for you. And we're actually going to go down and be at your level for the skit. So, no, I well, I guess, just because I'm a realtor, the mayor said I should become a recruiter for Cat River. And I guess we really do want people to come to Cat River, that's for sure. We could use a few more people. We're a great little town, but, gee, you know, we could have more people. We know we're inclusive. Look, we even welcomed dogs to Cat River. So I'm hoping there was a couple that cloned and said they wanted, they were town shopping and they wanted to come and meet with me. Gee, I hope they didn't get mixed up and go to Dog City. <laughs> oh, there they are. I bet that's them there. Hi. Hi. I'm Linda. Are you the people that came to look at the, the Cat River? We are. we are. Yes, I'm oh. Robert. Hi, Robert. I was Rosemary. And you're Rosemary. <laughs> okay, that's great. So tell us about uh, uh, Cat River, uh, Linda. Uh, what's the community like? Uh, what is the town like? What's the what are some of the best features of the uh, town? What are some uh, things that uh, we should know about if we were to move here? I knew they would ask hard questions. Um, what's the best thing? Well, I really think that the best thing about Cat River is that we are warm and welcoming. That's what it is. That's our best thing. Okay, so my mother is going to live with us. So she has mobility. Oh, okay. <laughs> my mother is going to live with us. She has mobility problems and, and lives out of her wheelchair. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> She'll want to uh, get to community activities. She's uh, very act sociable, I should say, and tries to be active. Well, well, that's great. I mean, we have lots of things going on in Cat River. So, do you have transportation for people who need help, like a van or a bus? Transportation. Transportation. Um, well, Ah, Joe. Joe has a van, and he sometimes takes people places. I'm sure Joe could help if we talk to him. Sometimes he takes people up to PA, and I bet he could take Mom in her wheelchair. <laughs> okay, so does it have a ramp that it's accessible to get into that van, or...? Uh, uh, yeah, we could get Mom in because Joe took out the back seat from the van, and if Chuck goes along with him, they could lift Mom in the wheelchair up into that back space, just as sl slick as anything, and there she'd be. They close the doors, and she's just as snug as a bug in a rug. Yeah, she'd be going back and forth, I bet. Oh, no, no, she'll run into the seats <laughs> if that happens. No, no, she should be okay. She should be okay. Oh, okay. Like, is that safe? Well, Joe drives real well. And Chuck's careful, too. And once they get her downtown, here's another feature. Downtown, where we have our main street, our main crosswalk with the light, we have one of those, well, on every corner, we have those sidewalk cutout things. Mm -hmm. So she and her wheelchair can get across the street just fine. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how many are in your family? Well, we have a great family, you know. We have, uh, we have a large family. We have seven sons and four daughters. Wow. Yeah, well, we're pretty proud of them. Are there things that they might get involved in? Well, sure. And you're going to need a big house, too, aren't you? That, too. And don't forget, yeah. we have the mother-in-law as well. Tell oh, me about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, there's lots of activities in Cat River. Like, what, if you've got seven sons and four daughters, like, Hockey is big in Cat River. Really, it's big. Do you have, do you have, do your boys play hockey? Well, our guys are pretty good skaters, and some of them are even pretty nifty uh, with the puck. You know, they handle the puck very well. Um, and we have a daughter that plays, she's probably the best of all of them. Wow. Do you have a girls' hockey team? Uh, well, right now, no, 
but but there are some girls that play on the boys team and if she's good she, she'd be fine she'd she'd work out fine on the boys team i'm sure <laughs> so how do you find out about uh clubs and activities for the kids and also for us oh well the way we do it here the best thing to do is you go to the post office between 10 and 11 in the morning is the best time because that's when most people come <laughs> and there's all kinds of talk and you'll get to meet people and there's some posters up in the post office and that's really the best way to find out so about So it's like the social on. gathering place? Well, I mean, yeah, sure, because if everybody has to go to the post office. Right, true. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the, you can count on meeting people there. Okay, so does anything get put on a community bulletin board or um, into the website? Do you have a website where you can find out about this stuff? Um, well, we talked about having a website, but we haven't found, you don't de develop websites by any chance, do you? <laughs> well, I work on them a little bit, I guess. Yeah, yeah, well, that could be a good thing to happen, but at the moment, no. And then we talked about maybe in the paper, but really our paper does more talking about what has happened than what will happen. So it could be an area where we have to develop a little bit, but, but uh, you don't know, really go to the post office and you'll find out. <laughs> okay. Seems to be the place to go, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. So hmm. you, you would be really welcome. I just, just can hardly think about how wonderful it would be to have that many 11 young people and a nice couple and a mother besides. So what do you think? Do you think that you're going to come to Cat River? Well, I, I don't know. It sounds pretty good. I think we could maybe give it a try. Yeah. Now, now Robert, remember we were going to look at Dog City and, and look at our options before we made a decision. So oh. I think we'll maybe look around and just see. Oh, well, you know, cats and dogs, <laughs> hey. Well, you'll be coming back to Cat River, <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you again. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot, Linda. You're welcome. Okay, so, oh, gotta get this up here. So age-friendly helps you look at your community the way others might see it. So think about your community and, and what you would like to say about it. So the uh, age-friendly um, initiative started with the World Health Organization in 2006. And uh, so it is a global movement. And uh, at that time, it brought together uh, cities from around the world that were interested in supporting healthy aging. And then in 2007, it uh, came to Canada. And uh, they developed uh, a guidebook out of that. Uh, they looked at uh, smaller communities and remote rural communities and set up a guidebook that uh, for those communities of 5,000 or less. And uh, that is on the website on um, the Canada health website and also in Canada the Public Health Agency of Canada leads uh, uh, the age-friendly uh, initiative across Canada so uh, we are bringing the uh, initiative forward in Saskatchewan uh, because of our provincial nature and our focus on uh, seniors and uh, we are really now pleased to have SUMA on board uh, and, and supporting this initiative. Uh, it uh, is going to be a great uh, partnership relationship with them. So Age Friendly Saskatchewan, um, we brought together a number of uh, different disciplines uh, in a meeting and uh, these are the ones that we brought together just to find out kind of what they're doing in parts of the puzzle uh, themselves and there is a lot out there going on. Um, and we will probably do this once or twice a year. We've only had one so far um, last year, and uh, so these are the, 
the ones that uh, came on board with us. So our purpose is to create inclusive communities. So to introduce the Age-Friendly Communities Initiative, to provide information resources and support for communities. And so out of this, we eventually want to put a resource book together uh, for a guideline for communities. And uh, there will be different parts in that book. Uh, we even want to include uh, dementia and Alzheimer's and, and the things that can be done around that uh, for our communities. And also inspire and guide communities in becoming age friendly. So we are not reinventing the wheel. We are grabbing uh, concepts from different uh, provinces across Canada and even around the world. But uh, we're putting a Saskatchewan flavor on it, is what we're doing. So one of the first uh, ones that started on the age friendly uh, initiative was Regina Beach and Buena Vista. And um, their communities are really unique in that they're very close together. They're divided by a street down the middle, but very different ideas on what they want. Uh, Buena Vista doesn't want any major light system. They like it quiet. They don't want their roads paved. Uh, they use the motion lights on their garages and stuff if people are walking or whatever. They don't want street lights. And that's the way they want it. Uh, all the business is on the Regina Beach side. They have the paved streets, et cetera, et cetera. So two different communities right side by side, but they each have their own uniqueness and the way they want to do it. So they developed a community survey and uh, sent it out in the mailboxes. And there's a number of different ways you can do surveys. And got the feedback back and uh, found out some things that needed to be worked on, and that's what their committee is, is doing now. And uh, I can say from being there in Regina Beach, it's got to be really quite one of the uh, forward age-friendly communities right now in Saskatchewan. Uh, most of their facilities and stuff are very accessible. Uh, this is a picture of their primary health care site. And, uh, you know, they all have the accessibility for wheelchairs and that. So. Um, some very good stuff going on there. The Lifelong Learning Center in Regina, and that's kind of another piece of the puzzle, doing it in a different way is around education. So they are uh, encouraging lifelong learning with their older adults. And they've also developed some, um, I'm trying to think of the word here, mentoring activities. Uh, to go with the schools. So you get the younger generation and the older generation interacting. And they also run a number of classes out of uh, the Lifelong Learning Center for Older Adults. So that's what uh, they're kind of doing. Saskatoon Council on Aging. Um, now that's a city, so a different whole way of uh, doing things. And they had three different phases. So the first one was the uh, scan and research. Uh, and, uh, you know, they did the surveys, they did focus groups, they uh, asked people about, uh, you know, what they, what they saw, uh, Saskatoon, was it age friendly, what needed to be changed and stuff. So that was in the phase one, and that's what, they came out with a, a booklet that they did with the findings. And uh, phase two was the analyze and plan, so going over all that data and deciding, you know, what, what would be the plan to to keep this going, and that came out with the booklet, the recommendations. And the, those are on their website, too. If you want to go on there, you can take a look at what they did. And the phase three, the action, monitor, evaluate, is what they're into now. So our regional gatherings, uh, we held some in 2014. And uh, we did Humboldt, Yorkton, and Moose Jaw. And Humboldt is... Uh, they're moving right along. The mayor is really uh, gung-ho and uh, has, is really moving this forward, Mayor Eaton. And they're establishing their committee. And they looked at uh, 
at it in a different way as far as some of the age-friendly stuff. Uh, we'll show you later on. There's eight domains, as they call it. They looked at their community as um, the culture of the community, not, eth not ethnic, but, you know, the culture of their community. And they divided into their values and their direction, what they wanted to go in. So I'm just going to give you an example of what they did. And so they did it out as active, welcoming, prosperous, creative, green, connected, and sustainable. So there are different ways of approaching age-friendly. Um, because each community, each city is different, unique, has their, their own needs, you know. So uh, there's not one major template that you can put on to a, a community. You can only give you guidelines and you develop it from, from your standpoint. So in 2015, uh, we are doing in Pontex and Weyburn. Uh, Pontex February 23rd, Weyburn uh, February the 25th. So we, if you're around those areas, if you live around those areas, we invite you to come. Uh, and we are doing workshops and uh, you get more in-depth information about age-friendly and what can be done and, and how the community can move forward to doing that, adopting that. And then we're also going to go to other communities uh, throughout the year. I had a call from somebody in PA the other day that was very interested, so we'll probably be going up there. Um, so, and we are pleased to work with the Federation uh, the, for the Francophone communities. Uh, again, Pontex is one of them. And we are working towards involvement of First Nations and Métis communities too. We want to bring them into the fold. So what is age-friendly? So I'm going to ask you that question. When I say age-friendly to you, does anybody want to say out loud what, what does that kind of mean to you? Like what does that connotate in your mind? Anybody? Accessibility, good. Any others? Great. Good one, good one, yes. Engaging, yes. Engaging your community. Good. That is, uh, yes, all of those, very good answers. So, age-friendly communities are communities where your services um, your policies, your support system, your structures, all uh, encourage aging uh, <laughs> I'm losing my, actively, sorry. Um, and all individuals are encouraged to become engaged and involved in, deci in decision making processes that affect your life. So, why become age friendly? Well, number one, if you have um, your citizens that become engaged, become involved, they feel they have some say in what is happening in their town, uh, maybe some of the planning, what happens? You get a more vibrant community. You get a safer community. People are connected. And it, it brings everybody together. And that's what we are aiming at, is we're not just aiming at the seniors. That's how it all kind of started. But we are aiming this intergenerationally. So it's all through the ages. So you can age well in your community. So that's, that's what uh, the main focus is of age-friendly communities. And uh, it reduces isolation. It reduces abuse. You know, people have respect. You know, when you get everybody involved. And it's greater opportunities for businesses. If people have a good, um, uh, boy, getting, you know, coming to your uh, business and, and having a good experience, they will come back and they will pass that word along. They'll say, oh, that was a great place to go into, and, you know, they're welcoming, and they're, they help, they're helpful, you know. Because Lord knows, you know, if there's something bad, you'll hear about it too. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, that's uh, some of that. 
Now, age-friendly communities in Canada. So these are some of the numbers across Canada. Um, they haven't all been updated. Uh, Manitoba has 100 communities already involved. Um, Alberta had two that are actually age-friendly recognized. Uh, Strathcona County was one in 2013, and last year Edmonton was age-friendly recognized. And uh, so you can see that there's quite a bit going uh, across Canada, and Saskatchewan's were a little bit behind the eight ball. So uh, we're hoping to get this going. But like I say, we do now have you know, Regina Beach, Buena Vista, we do have uh, Humboldt, um, I forgot to mention, you know, Yorkton is becoming involved too. They have already established their committee and are looking at uh, getting their resolution ready to give to their town council about age friendly. <coughs> so that's what's happening across Canada. So age friendly is about community. And if you look at community, it's a coming together in unity. And of course, people are the heart and soul of communities. And everyone has important, valuable contributions to make. So your community is a better place to live, work, and, and grow older in. And age-friendly is an effective and action-planned response to going through the generations. So now we have a Manitoba video, uh, which is very inspiring. And uh, just bear with me here. All across Manitoba, more and more communities are recognizing the importance of becoming age friendly. The Manitoba government invites communities to join the Age-Friendly Manitoba Initiative and discover how doing so can be the catalyst to remarkable changes. To Gladstone, Age-Friendly has become um, our new way of life. Uh, we were, like many other small communities in the rural Manitoba, we were seeing a, a dramatic decline in population and a dramatic decline in business. Oops, sorry. Just trying to get the volume up here. Okay. This is in our community. After attending the Age Friendly Workshop in 2008, uh, it gave us a vision of where we needed to take our community for continued growth or uh, to revitalize our community. And uh, we have not looked back since that date. Tiffany, is there a way to... Okay, I'm just going to hang on for a minute because... Well, she's hanging on. I never like to waste a second. <laughs> uh, this is a good group and we've been referring to it all the time as we've talked, including that map that showed Manitoba with a hundred communities that were actively working to be age friendly and as Rosemary said Saskatchewan we're really just getting going but I think that one of the exciting things is that numbers of really important organizations are recognizing that using that lens that of eight. looking at a community through seniors eyes means that you improve it for all ages but the place where we really want to affect some change to help us out is to affect the Saskatchewan government. And SUMA and SSM and SARM and those other organizations have all met with and talked with folks from the Saskatchewan government. We've talked with Dustin Duncan. And uh, we're really hoping that the time will come soon when Saskatchewan supports communities that are accredited and will be able to say to your community, we can, we can grant accreditation to you. You can put that up on your advertising. It can mean something that's really important to communities. So we're beginning now. And I guess we're really happy to see all you SUMA folks in this uh, workshop and in the next one to come, because that was, that's part of what we're going to be about. 
Are we back to Manitoba? Just right. before you do that, I just want to say, in almost every community across the world um, where age-friendly has really taken off, it's had uh, government support. And by government, I mean not only Canadian or, or country government, the country uh, governments of the country or the province or the state, uh, but, but the cities as well and the towns as well. So uh, it needs that kind of push, I think, uh, to get it going. And that's probably why Manitoba, our neighbors to the east, are so much advanced over us is because they do have support from their provincial government. And as Linda said, that's what we're hoping to achieve in our next steps along the way. But uh, have a look at the video. Uh, So Stephanie, it's good now? It should be. I told them to turn it up. Okay. All across Manitoba, more and more communities are recognizing the importance of becoming age-friendly. The Manitoba government invites communities to join the Age-Friendly Manitoba Initiative and discover how doing so can be the catalyst to remarkable changes. To Gladstone, age-friendly has become um, our new way of life. Uh, we were, like many other small communities in the rural Manitoba, we were seeing a, a dramatic decline in population and a dramatic decline in businesses in our community. After attending the Age Friendly Workshop in 2008, uh, it gave us a vision of where we needed to take our community for continued growth or uh, to revitalize our community and uh, we have not looked back since that date. As a community, to be age-friendly is to be socially inclusive and physically accessible to people of all ages and all abilities. Age-friendly is all about respect. Um, that's a very important thing. Age-friendly communities foster respect for the diversity and the varying abilities of older Manitobans and for their continued contributions to the economic and social viability of the communities in which they live. That includes creating opportunities that encourage seniors to continue to enjoy the great outdoors and the natural beauty Manitoba has to offer. I just recently retired and so I've uh, found myself very much enjoying the opportunity to walk along the river more often than I ever have before. It's absolutely beautiful and it's certainly adding to my quality of life. Age Friendly is about an environment that enables people of all ages, but particularly older people, to live the life that they choose. So in some ways, it helps communities come alive. The Gladstone Wellness Trail was built with the help of the Age Friendly Initiative. It's quickly become a focal point in this small rural Manitoba community. When it was complete, it wasn't seniors just walking down there, it was all ages students, children, grandchildren, grandparents walking, using the exercise stations. This is win. not a competition. <laughs> we count. One, one two, two, Well, three. you feel better for one thing. You know, I've always been outside for a lot. And it's, uh, it's, it's very nice to be able to come out here. Almost half of Manitoba's current communities are now recognized as age-friendly. For this Pinawa jazz band, that means musicians of all ages are welcome. I find the young people are, are really wonderful in this town. I would not hate to be left in a community where it was just us old folks. I definitely enjoy playing with the senior members because it's cool to have like many people in the community get together and play because otherwise you might not get to see them so it definitely gives us a chance to come closer together and meet one another. Do you got all your family on Facebook? Yes. Yes, that's nice. In Gladstone, the younger generation was quick to recognize the benefits of getting to know those that came before them. I think age friendly is uh, a good attitude and atmosphere in the community where all generations can get along well and interact with each other. I was kind of surprised that I had fun. 
they played shuffleboard, which they were really good at, and I was kind of pretty bad, so they showed me up on that quite well. But yeah, they had a lot to say, and I had a good time. The Age-Friendly Initiative focuses on practical issues like transportation, infrastructure, housing, and health. And Age-Friendly also provides a blueprint for communities and local businesses to work together to reach those goals. So you have to engage the larger community, someone from the school, someone from the community center, someone from any kind of housing organization that you have, uh, any seniors organizations, because uh, a committee of age-friendly can't do all the work themselves. I knew that we had a big job to do, and it wasn't about buildings and it wasn't about sidewalks. It was about how we made our people feel. Many countries around the world are grappling to understand how we can ensure that older people remain connected in their communities and also you know, a part of the economic and social productivity. There is remarkable similarity among communities within Canada and around the world. Manitoba has taken a leadership position in so many aspects of the creation of Age Friendly but also the sustainability of Age Friendly. Uh, I certainly would uh, uh, recommend the Age Friendly program to other communities. First of all, you, the brand itself uh, suggests that you're a community that are, are open to making improvements to support people of all ages in your community. The province through the Age Friendly Initiative have been extremely supportive of the projects that we have uh, been doing and that has uh, help to promote our community and also to continue to improve it. I think the fact that our community knows that we're working towards a goal and it's, it's a journey, um, they're happy. And I think that's what other communities need to understand. It's, it's not something that you're just going to do this year or you're going to do it for five years. You're in for the long haul. You're going to do this from here on in. It's making your community better right now and for the, all the tomorrows that are ahead. The Manitoba government's Seniors and Healthy Aging Secretariat assists communities in our province to become age-friendly. You can make a difference by supporting age-friendly Manitoba initiatives in your community. To learn more about making your community more age-friendly, visit our website at agefriendlymanitoba.ca or call the Secretariat at 1-800-665-6565. So there, very inspiring uh, video and just showing how uh, they've done things intergenerationally and what it's done for their community. So out of the, with the World Health Organization came eight focus areas or domains as they call it that affect our life. And these are the different uh, domains that uh, goes along with the Age Friendly uh, Initiative. So in the next few slides, uh, we're going to go through each one of these domains. And I want you to, as you watch the slides, I want you to um, think about yourselves as recruiters in the community. And, uh, and, and while you uh, look at these questions that go along with them. So we have our outdoor spaces and buildings. So how accessible do you find them? And think about your parks, your sidewalks, your streets, your stores. You know, what is, what is good about them now or what can change? Transportation. How, what's the availability like to get around? And think of those who don't drive anymore or have uh, varying physical abilities. <laughs> Every town we've been to uh, or city, Transportation comes up all the time. It's, it's a big one. Housing. What kind of housing options exist in your community? Are there a variety of them that are available that suit, you know, different needs, including affordability? I would really like to see some housing developers get into really age-friendly stuff and uh, develop them around 
age friendly and you know having a, a store close by a medical clinic in their pharmacy uh, you know recreation stuff have transportation available there and again make it all affordable not everybody can afford three four thousand dollars a month each at some of these places so that's quite a task but it would be really nice to see that social participation how easy, how easy is it for you to participate in different activities in your community? You know, and consider all those different areas. And do they appeal to everybody? Respect and social inclusion. Oh, I'm dry. <laughs> um, you know, what opportunities are available for everybody to be included and, to, and for their ideas to be accepted and because uh, again if you engage and involve people it just uh, your community just becomes better civic participation and employment opportunities so what kind of volunteer options are there are the intergenerational um, is it encouraged and what employment opportunities are available including seniors and those with varying physical abilities communication and information so how can governments and businesses and organizations communicate better with the residents? And, uh, you know, how do you uh, get that information? Community support and health services. Are there affordable services to help seniors with, with things around the community, like snow removal, lawn, whatever, gar weeding the garden? And do you have local health care services? So what can local ur urban governments and communities do? So we are now going to have, I'll let, take it over to Linda. I'm just going to, we're going to focus around these areas. So you saw Manitoba. You heard about Cat River. And you have your own reality. And everything about age-friendly isn't about spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. It's really about planning and how you go about the directions that your community might uh, take in regard to any one of these places. Not getting me? All right, I'll get myself closer. I could just project in my old school teacher voice, too. So what we'd like you to do and invite you to do for the next few minutes, just uh, uh, six minutes, ten minutes maybe, is to think about the realities of your town and think about maybe pick one or two of the different aspects that occur to you and think to yourself, look at it critically and positively all at the same time what do we like? What would, could we do differently? What might we want to aim for? And if you will just talk to one or two people near you, like you might be from the same town, you might be for different ones, think about it first, then just talk to one another. And at the end of that time, which will be no more than 10 minutes, uh, we'll invite you to be able to come and give us feedback or ask us questions. If you unearth something in that conversation that leads to question you might have about age-friendly, uh, please do that. If there comes to be ideas, note them down because you can take them back to where you're going or talk to others during this uh, time of the SUMA convention too. So for now, think about the realities of your town with respect to those different aspects. And if you can, talk to a neighbor about what you're, what you're thinking about, what you're seeing. Okay? Talk time. Or think time.
I like the sound of conversation. And now I'm going to ask for the conversation to gradually come down. Somebody still says they can't hear me, so I'll get my mic right under my chin here. I can't turn it up any more than what it is. Can you hear it, Tiffany? Yeah. Excellent. It's not so important now what I have to say as what you folks might say. And we do have uh, an aisle mic. And this is the time if you have comments about age-friendly, comments about what you'd like to do in your community, questions about any of this, uh, please, by all means, come and use the mic so people can hear one another. I don't know whether you found in your conversations that you all have perfect towns that need uh, n nothing. And maybe even if you gave feedback on aspects of your towns or cities that you would like to, which you think there could be some improvement, maybe uh, small changes or ways that you'd like to see planning, anything at all if you can offer feedback. So first I need an extrovert to get up and do that. Here comes, here comes a couple, thank you. Uh, my name is Karen McKinnon, I'm actually from Flim Flon, Manitoba, Saskatchewan. Welcome to Saskatchewan, you, you <laughs> we have 200 Manitoban. <laughs> but I'm very, very proud to say that Flim Flon is an age-friendly community. <laughs> so um, I'd like, and I saw this workshop and I thought, this is the major reason I came. I'm the only one that came from Flint I saw this happening. I thought, oh, new ideas and whatever. I didn't realize Saskatchewan was behind in having this happen. So I, I encourage everyone that's here to lobby your provincial government to support this initiative because I'll tell you, Manitoba sure does. Like the, the support it 100% when you bring up, you talk to any of the ministers in Manitoba, no matter what their portfolio is, you mention age friendly and they perk right up. Uh, Mayor Eileen Clark, um, she's been in it right from the start since it came about. She's actually not mayor anymore. I think she's running. She didn't win the last time. But she is so passionate about that. You sit and you talk to her about the things she's done in her community. It's just unbelievable. So any of you here that want to set the goal for your communities. Uh, Flimplon actually has a 34% senior population. Very, very high. And it's a very hilly community. <laughs> <It is>. uh, <laughs> not like the prairies. And there still is a long way to go. Like It's very hard businesses and, uh, you know, financially it's, it's to make everything accessible. But we have everything from the handy van and I just got an idea here, the Rotary Park, those exercise machines that were put in, and I, I never clued in like they're for adults and you never see them going. So I'm thinking, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll encourage the city of Flimflon to promote this. And I, like I'm getting from this the idea that the city has to help out more to promote the senior events. But anyway, I could go on forever about our beautiful community, but 
<laughs> anyway, my, my biggest statement is, is that I encourage everyone in here to lobby your government to support this age-friendly initiative. Thanks so much. Hi, my name is Lance Cornwell. I'm with uh, Councillor with the Town of Strasbourg. And for any of you, we do have a very age-friendly community, so if you want to move there, feel free to uh, look me up later. Um, I, as well, was very interested in the equipment that they were using in that, uh, in that park. Is there any way that we can get information on that? And uh, the other thing is, how do we, as a community, get recognized as an age-friendly community? Um, we're very interested in that as well. We do have a lot of initiatives going in our community already. Uh, we've got a very good rec board that uh, does try to look after senior activities and things like that. So we're, we're very interested. So if, you know, if we can get any information on that, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, uh, playground outdoor equipment like that? I, I, I don't have intimate terms with anybody that's selling it, but I do know that in Regina, down by the Sunset Rec Center, there is a park that has the outdoor equipment. Um, we could maybe make some inquiries. Well, you're at Strasbourg, you're pretty close too, that you might get in touch with that rec center and see where that came as far as the city of Regina, unless Rosemary knows more. Well, there was, I'm trying to think of the name of the place and I can't remember if it's at a Lumsden. They were at our conference, I think, last year. That sold it? That sold it. So um, we'll do a little research So too. I know I have the information, I just, just, I just can't think what it is right now. But. Right. So you might even give SSM a call. The other part, uh, I think, is uh, one of the essential questions that you could ask at this, how does our community get recognized or how do we go towards age-friendly? Uh, when Rosemary talked about gatherings, it's one of the ways, uh, if you invite SSM, if you invite our age-friendly resource team, at the moment we still are able, uh, we still have funding that we are able to go to a community and we will do the much more in depth, how do you go about the steps that you take to become age friendly. There are milestones along the way. And one of the first milestones is to do a, some assessment of your, of your community. Uh, that's where when she talked about the survey at Regina Beach, Buena Vista, so that you get a, a baseline and if you want to go ahead, then there's the working with the local government, whatever that is, that's essential, so that there's a resolution that's passed that says, yes, our village, town, city wants to be age friendly and is willing to go to that. Then uh, a committee is formed that starts to plan what activity, what direction, what what would be our first goal? And it wouldn't be to do all of this in one fell swoop, but there would be something that you would be working towards. And so if you're interested at all, Rosemary here from Saskatchewan Seniors Mechanism or go to the Saskatchewan Seniors Mechanism website, which will be up on a, on a slide later on at the very end, that's where to start. I just want to add to that, uh, we'd love to come to Strasbourg to do a gathering, uh, especially since you already consider yourself uh, friendly at least, maybe not necessarily totally intergenerationally age friendly, but uh, I'm sure you are in many aspects. Uh, but also this points again, as Linda mentioned earlier, to the fact that we really need to have not only our civic governments, uh, but also our provincial government on board. And I think that's what's making uh, Manitoba uh, leap so far ahead of us, and perhaps the lady from uh, Flin Fon could agree or disagree, but I think the fact that they have their provincial government uh, behind them and uh, that their communities are uh, having a process of uh, becoming recognized as an age-friendly community uh, is pretty important and goes a long way to helping the communities. So just to think to that, add to that. And that's why we signed the partnership with SUMA in the hopes that there's more strength in numbers and we can uh, perhaps work at that aspect. Sir, go ahead. Uh, Jim Coulter, uh, Councillor for the Town of Watrous. Uh, two things. 
Obviously, we have a trade show here, and I'm sure that there'd be somebody that would be eager uh, to provide technical information on that. On the equipment. Going to uh, the discussion that I had with my colleagues, there are three of us here uh, in a group, and we were talking about transportation, and I guess I came to the realization that a lot of us have a lot of resources, but sometimes we don't utilize them in the correct way. And, and we got talking about our courtesy van, and, and it's uh, wheelchair accessible, it, it operates on the basis of volunteers, but somehow we've, we've assigned it almost an exclusivity to handling uh, patients from the nursing home. And uh, there's all kinds of potential there if you've got enough volunteers to, to man it. And I know one of the things that we're working towards is, is getting a one hour shopping trip once a week, maybe every Thursday morning for an hour, uh, if people would phone into our town office and we had a volunteer driver, like that's extending that use. And, uh, and I think sometimes we have those resources, we just don't allocate them in the right way and, and we think that uh, maybe this resource is only used by this committee and uh, we limit ourselves in that way. So it's, it's uh, also a change in attitude and maybe breaking down some of those little petty, what, uh, exclusive groups in the community so that we can work together instead of working individually. So sometimes it's uh, about identifying a need uh, and uh, seeing what resources you may already have. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, you don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel or go out and purchase new resources, you might already have them there. It's maybe yep. just a matter of taking a second look at what you have which and is, what your needs are. Which we found in almost every one of our, our gatherings that we've done so far, as, as we've said before, transportation came out. But that's where age-friendly and an age-friendly committee might take exactly what you've talked about as their first project. And the organization of that and finding the volunteers and having scheduling and agreement that this is what you're going to do gets the wheels under it, so to speak, so that that van can be used in a better way. Yes. I'm Tina Cresswa from Maple Creek. Uh, just a comment, first of all, on the transportation thing in the van. We have a handy van, and I think we, we use it fairly exclusively for people who, with uh, mobility issues. However, it probably could be used better, except that we have a volunteer taxi. And the volunteer taxi is the one, is the, the uh, vehicle that transports seniors to uh, medical appointments and shopping and all of that stuff. We also have a local entrepreneur who is buying a couple of buses that he's going to be able to take seniors to larger centers and stuff like that. What I wanted to ask more about is, could you talk just briefly, and I don't, about age in place housing. We're looking right now at a new hospital. Our lodge is, it, the town is going to own the lodge. And I think we're looking at level one, level two um, assisted living, but at this point we don't know enough about it. So it's not this grouping that would give you a wonderful answer on how age in place will take place other than to say hallelujah that's really, I think, a focus. I think it's a focus in our conversations with Minister Duncan. In our, we have a housing committee of SSM that's doing more of the work on that kind of thing. But again, from the lens of age friendly, drawing together the different interests and trying to do planning and therefore finding out what might be the financial resources and the human resources needed. Uh, might be where that kind of a, what would be a large project that would take place over a longer stretch of time could still be organized, planned for, and carried out with some sort of momentum. That's what I would think from your question. Hi, I'm Norma Weber from the town of Watson. Um, I was very pleased to see that we have a lot of age-friendly things in our community. We have a lot of activities. We have a grass green golf course and a swimming pool and arena and they are all accessible. We have a caravan that goes uptown once a week 
takes all of the elderly people that don't have transportation or who don't want to drive, like in the winter, takes them uptown for shopping, coffee. It's also rentable. So, um, yeah, we have all kinds of things. Uh, once a month, our New Horizons has a potluck dinner. And anybody can come. You pay to eat at it, too. You bring food. Everybody gives a donation. Uh, we have cribbage. Uh, every Tuesday night at the New Horizons, um, all ages come out to play. Um, we have a lot of volunteerism. On our town council, we have what we call associate councillors, and they can come out and uh, they're registered, uh, insured with the town. They can help prune trees, they can work at the arena, they can do all kinds of things. So, yeah, we have a lot of things in our community that are already going. We have a long way to go though too. Thank you. Well, thank you for those ideas. And you have a good base to start from in Watson, don't you? But you might still go on. Yep. Uh, Richard Fry from uh, Pierceland, a counselor there. I'm not going to speak about Pierceland, but I, sitting here just listening to your presentation and reflecting a little bit, I have spent the better part of the last 10 years spending a lot of time in seniors' homes because my father-in-law was in one for six years and both of my parents were in one for about four years. In all the time that I was in two of those homes, one in a city, one in a larger town, I never saw anything that would fit the bill of what you're talking about. The other thing that dawned upon me is I'm not that far away from when I might be in one of those homes and I would sure like to see what you are presenting to us. So I'm just here because I know there's a lot of people here that are younger than me. There's a lot of people that are my age or older, probably have some of the same concerns I do. and. We've heard a lot of things we didn't want to hear on the news in the last few months about seniors' homes. I think it behooves us to do a lot about it, and this is one of the best ways that I can see. So I commend you for what you're doing, and hopefully you get a lot of us involved. Thank you. Thank you. We would be happy to get a lot of you involved. <laughs> And I think, I'm looking at Ben here, I think, I think we're getting to the time when I'll ask Rosemary to do her just a few, couple of wrap-up things, and then I'll give it over to Ben. Okay, so uh, just uh, age-friendly Saskatchewan, and there's our website, and it's fairly infant in its stages uh, yet. It'll evolve over time as we get more communities in there. And when communities write up a report or whatever, what they're doing, we can put it on there, and then other communities can get ideas of what they're doing, so it's, it's really a good resource. Um, to access a resource team, there's the email, and it may be on the back of the, well, it's inside the covers of your, uh, if you picked up one of those uh, folders today. Yeah. And uh, there's our phone numbers, too, for myself and Robert. And to become age-friendly, it takes time, cooperation, persistence, and patience. It's not going to happen overnight. It is a journey, a long-term, ongoing commitment. Um, and I liked what I, Lileen Clark said. It wasn't about the sidewalks or the buildings, but how you, they made the people feel. And that's what you want to do. Uh, you want to get your uh, people engaged, involved. So I'm going to give you a prescription today to go out and make your communities age friendly so they become safer, become healthier, become more vibrant, intergenerational, less abuse and isolation. Do you want to fill that prescription? Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. Are there, we have a few more minutes. Is, are there some last minute questions? We'll take just a couple more if there is someone that has uh, a question. Uh, 
I'm uh, Don Fornis from Neville, Saskatchewan, and we have the, I guess, the unenviable uh, position of being a village, a very, very small village, instead of towns, and we don't have a lot of facilities, but I, and I know this may not be the right forum, but I, and you, because you people are seniors mechanisms, but when I hear age-friendly, we have the opposite problem. 90% of the people in our town are retired and we're trying to engage them. How do you engage them in the younger generation to make them feel more accepted? Um, we will, I will meet you probably in Pontex if you're going to be there on the 23rd oh, excellent. because we're only 15 minutes north of there. But right. it's one of the issues we have is re-engaging the, the, the people in the town with our young people to make them feel better and then maybe stay there. Small things, like we don't have a lot of budget, so small things that we can do to make our town feel better is sitting benches and so on, and, and it, it's not healthy for you, but a lot of our senior citizens grew up smoking and still do. So making a, a, a comfortable area for them to sit in when they're, after they've had coffee is, is small things that we can do with a very, very tiny budget. Mm -hmm. But what we really need is advice on how to make all the ages feel comfortable, not just the older people, because they're already there. And that's really what age friendly is. It is intergenerational, so you're right on the money with that. Finding commonalities and what they are, and you may start like the one that showed the uh, teenagers helping the older people figure out how to do Facebook. Yes. Even a little club, something like that, that, that there was a time that there could be sharing of wisdom. Just whatever might fit the needs. And it'll, your town never will be different than uh, any of the towns around it. But we'll certainly look forward to talking further on the 23rd if you're at Pontex. <laughs> just before we take the next question, I just want to break down of uh, how many people are here representing villages? Oh, look okay. at all those villages. And how about towns <laughs> and cities? Great. Okay, we have representation <laughs> from all. Good. I, gr I grew up in a small village. Do any of you know where Webb is? <laughs> Master Swift? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Um, I'm Candace Kirkpatrick. I'm a, a councillor with the city of Moose Jaw. Um, it, yes, we, we have a lot going on. Um, I, in the discussion that we had, I grew up in a small town, and I recognize that, that a lot of the problems that the small towns have, uh, we ap appear to have addressed and to have conquered. Um, I disagree in some ways. You know, when I was growing up and I went out to play and it was time to come home, my mom would just go to the door and yell. And then it got passed on until the last mom said, I think you're supposed to go home, Candace. And I was way across town. So the post office with the posters and people meeting is not a bad thing. Don't because be that to me is the challenge in a city, is how to get that word out. Sounds odd, but if you don't have access to the internet, or choose not to use the internet, if you don't get the local paper, which by the way, if you go on the internet after two tries or something in a month, now costs you 99 cents to access an article. Um, if you don't have that, it, that has always been my concern in a city even the size of Moose Jaw. You know, in some of your small towns, you literally know who lives in every single one of those houses and whether or not they're over the age of 50. And if that's the demographic that you're trying to reach, you can do that drop in their mailboxes or on their front door or you know them and you'll see them on the street. So that's the problem or that's the concern or challenge I believe that we have in larger centers is how to really get the, we've got a lot of pockets going on, but it's hard to get everybody together to really uh, form that, that kind of bond that I think we need. Yep. <laughs> okay, one more. Short, short comment to big cities. You people have, uh, because I was the press president of Kiwanis and Swift Current, you have all the service groups that are basically dealing with the same age groups you're looking for. It's a very simple thing to utilize the Kiwanis, the Rotary, the Cosmos, the Lions, oh, the really Knights of Columbus. There's a, there's a million service groups. It, once a year, get together with all the service groups, host a little lunch, and tell them what you want to do. 
they'll get a hold of the people. That's the easiest way to do it. And it costs you nothing. <laughs> well, no, it is. It is really. If you let the service groups do their work, that's what they do. Well, thank you uh, so much to all of you for your attention and your input into this, uh, this afternoon's uh, session. And uh, once again, Linda, Rosemary, and Robert, uh, thank you so much for, for uh, engaging us and uh, getting us wiser. And uh, we have a challenge with our seniors in all our communities. Uh, let's uh, try to get ahead with that and uh, do our best. Once more, let's give these three uh, an excellent applause. <laughs> With that, I hope you uh, enjoy this uh, next three days, and uh, uh, thank you for coming once again. Bye-bye. <laughs>